I'm actually, I don't, I don't know how strong a word to use, Mike. Afraid. I'm afraid for the first time. And that, that's a big statement, but I'm afraid for the first time. You know, I, I have been talking about the then they fight you phase, again, for over a year. And I've been talking about us versus them and us on the crypto side and the digital side and the Bitcoin side. And everybody's, oh, Bitcoin's not crypto. Yes, it is. It's a cryptographic security. It is. It's a blockchain. People think, oh, they, they did that. Oh, no, 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 no. I understand it from talking to some kind of people on the ground at different projects. There's some bad stuff coming. Just last week, BlackRock, one of Wall Street's behemoths in asset management, made headlines by joining a growing roster of firms aiming to bridge the gap between investors and the cryptocurrency world. Managing a massive portfolio of almost $10 trillion, BlackRock's move into the crypto landscape stirred a huge amount of responses across the community. The firm has submitted an application to the US Securities and Exchange Commission for a Bitcoin ETF, a move that generated both support and criticism within the crypto space. Proponents believe that BlackRock's potential ETF, considering the company's history of successful approvals, could bolster the price of crypto assets. Conversely, skeptics argue that BlackRock's corporate nature is in stark contrast to the decentralized principles championed by the cryptocurrency industry. Furthermore, they highlight that the proposed offering is essentially a trust, yet experts contend it mirrors a traditional ETF in functionality. According to the filing, BlackRock's plans to introduce the A-Shares Bitcoin Trust, which purports to provide investors with a simplified pathway to engage with cryptocurrencies via a product managed by the world's largest asset handler. The document emphasizes that the proposed shares will provide an investment opportunity akin to a direct investment in Bitcoin, bypassing the need to directly trade the cryptocurrency on digital asset exchanges. Over the past decade, multiple investment entities have sought SEC approval for a Bitcoin ETF, but such applications have consistently been met with rejection, predominantly due to fears of market manipulation. Last year, Grayscale Investments even initiated a legal battle against the SEC following the non-approval of its proposed conversion of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust (GBTC) into an ETF. Similar applications from firms like Kathy Wood's Ark Invest also face swift rejection by the regulatory body. However, some analysts believe BlackRock's bid will fare much better. Given its standing as the world's premier investment manager and its collaboration with reputable financial institutions like the Bank of New York Mellon, BlackRock may stand a better chance. The application also mentions that BlackRock intends to partner with Coinbase as a custodian despite the ongoing legal tussle between the SEC and the US-based exchange. In the latest episode of his weekly roundup with BlockWorks Macro, esteemed hedge fund manager and crypto enthusiast Mark Yusko explores what these spot Bitcoin applications could imply for the broader cryptocurrency market, particularly given the caliber of BlackRock's application. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Mark Yusko also breaks down the Federal Reserve's move to pause on interest rate hikes but suggesting further rate hikes later in the year. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. We said it on this show yeah. over a year ago saying this, no one else will get approved except BlackRock. Yep. The only person who will ever get a spot ETF is BlackRock. And there's a reason <laughs> because they're inside the tent and we're outside the tent and anyone competing. but. Here's the thing, Operation Choke Point, people think, oh, they, they did that. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I understand it from talking to some kind of people on the ground at different projects. There's some bad stuff coming. Like, actually what I'm really afraid about is if the SEC does what it appears they're gonna do in terms of declaring all of it, except Bitcoin, a security, and anyone who's transacted in any of this stuff is kind of a criminal, that's gonna be bad. And, and but, but where does it stop? Are my Pokemon cards securities now? Is, is my Magic the Gathering game a Pokemon? I mean, is that a security now? And again, it's not in my best interest to criticize the people who regulate me, I know that. Um, so don't come for me. But I'm starting to really appreciate what I've been talking about, which is they, and we know who they are. JP Morgan, BlackRock, and, and all of the controllers of the money and power 
felt threatened, as, as they should have, by a disruptive innovation that will, I'm not going to back down from will, replace them. Mm. Right? The infrastructure of trust will be replaced by the infrastructure of truth. It just, it just will. But man, the war is going to be bloody. The implied ridiculousness yeah. of, you know, I had a guy respond to me, this is negative. Or, no, this is a bad thing. No, it's not. Yeah. But what they're implying is that money isn't pure. Mm. I mean, it's literally like mud bloods and pure bloods from, from Harry Potter. That money's not pure. We don't want that money converting into Bitcoin. Of, of course you do. You want any and all fiat of any kind and any variety to convert to Bitcoin because the bigger the network, the bigger the you know safety, security, the, the more adoption, the more, that's the only way the value of a network goes up is there more participants. And so to say that, well, they, they're the enemy. Well, they might be, right? BlackRock and JP Morgan, I shouldn't accuse people directly, but it's hypothetically possible that since November of last year, when the futures-based ETF was issued, it's entirely possible that those large institutions have been shorting the shit out of Bitcoin. Yeah. It's entirely possible. In fact, it's highly likely because we have proof in the gold market that they do. And every year they make billions of dollars shorting the future and going long the, the physical. And it's unbelievable to me that that's okay, right? That JP can pay a billion dollar fine, a billion dollars, but say, oh yeah, we made 20 billion, so that's 5%, who cares? Cost of doing business. And it's cost of doing business. And again, it's clear that that happened for a portion of this downturn, because it's to the day that it started. Now, yes, it was, exa it was exacerbated by you know, Sam, and it was exacerbated by, you know, bad people doing bad things, but it just, it just is. Look, you know, first we had the dovish hike. I'm like, what the hell is a dovish hike? I mean, the, the, the creativity to wordsmith all these words. And look, I, I, I don't envy their job. You know, in the digital age, in the social media age, every single word every action, every body movement, every everything, every piece of luggage you, you carry is interpreted. And so, so now they've come up with this idea of a hawkish pause. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, in December last year, everybody said, oh, they're gonna pivot, 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 pivot. And the stock market surged and everybody's like, oh, this is great. And now we've had this, you know, not incredible, it's crazy. I mean, maniacal. I mean, is true mania run in some of the tech stocks, particularly around AI, uh, just on on nothing, I mean, on literally nothing. And I mean, in terms of, of the, the results of the companies, the tech is great, yeah. but you know, Microsoft invests something that's worth 10 billion and their market cap goes up 200 billion or Google promises a billion dollar order to Nvidia and their market cap goes up 200 billion. Or this company C3 AI, this is, I've been wrong in the sense that, you know, the stock literally should be zero. The stock should be zero. Whatever they earn in revenue, they lose. Like they make 60 million in revenue every quarter, they lose 60 million every quarter. They inviscerate cash. There is no business there. And the stock is up like 400% this year because its ticker is AI. Everyone thinks it's open AI. And that's, that's just stupid. So the market markets lost their mind because of this belief that somehow the Fed's gonna, as you said, inject liquidity, but, but they're not. Mm. I mean, save the 300 billion that they did in an emergency around SVB, okay, which reversed a whole bunch of the QT from last year. They are definitely not loosening. They have not, you know, even, I mean, they stopped hiking, maybe. They said maybe there could be a couple more. But they have not reversed and they have not started injecting liquidity and they have not stopped shrinking their balance sheet. So, and if you use the discount rate, the average discount rate of five and a quarter today, the valuations are just stupid, right? We've had the S&P multiple expand in a world where interest rates went from one to five. It's completely illogical. If you, if you can do math, right? Which math is hard. That is one of my hashtags. 
it just just wouldn't happen because earnings have gone down, not up. So everything's wrong with that picture. Now, China, on the other hand, quietly, money printer go burr. They are quietly printing money, lowering interest rates. Their currency is off 5%. That's, that's a big deal. Stock market had surged from October, then fell, gave it all back. But now in the last two weeks, suddenly is up again because people are like, oh, wait a second. They really are printing money. Their GDP really is going to be back to 6%. They really are focused on growth. Now, my favorite, Michael, is they've got a new bill, broad-based, they call it a white paper, actually, which I think is kind of funny, uh, on crypto that may reverse the ban. Shocking. No, not shocking. He said, China, I've been talking about this for years, China's playing Go. They're playing a different game. The rest of the world is arguing how to set up the checkerboard. They're playing a different game from the lockdowns, which they fomented around the world. Well, why did they do that? Why did they destroy their own economy for two years? To gain market share, to gain a pause, back to the hawkish pause. They gained a pause in activity, pollution, all kinds of things. They allowed, they had a big reset and now they're stepping on the gas and sprinting away. They're, they're first to CBDC. They're, fir- they're going to be first to a broad-based digital asset system. I mean, they're, they're just they're kicking our ass. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny yeah. to watch, actually. So there's Mark Yusko, fearful of what BlackRock's move into Bitcoin is going to ultimately mean. In the midst of these developments, Bitcoin has exhibited a bullish response. The resurgent coming after a slew of weak price action, which came as a result of regulatory scrutiny on the crypto industry, coupled with an announcement from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell indicating potential additional rate hikes following a hawkish pause. So an interesting mix of catalysts unfolding at the moment, with both bullish and bearish news occurring. Could the SEC's regulatory action be in tandem with BlackRock so that they could accumulate more Bitcoin before launching their ETF? Do you think that BlackRock's Bitcoin application will ultimately be approved? Would love to hear your views on Yusko's evaluation of the US economy and his insights on BlackRock's ETF application. Please share your thoughts and insights in the comment section below. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications to stay updated with the most recent financial content around. And as always, all the best.